goes to the supporters of channel member Liam Campbell. All I'm saying is this this new ground you're promising had better be spectacular after the nonsense you pulled with Kieran Hodgkinson and Bachelorette Pitetta yesterday. They would keep it. What did you need that money for? If you if you needed 400 quid that badly, I could have given you my Xbox. I mean, he's an England under 18 international and you sold him. Oh. Just please, no more of that. Thanks. Hello and welcome to part 16 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our first two games of season three. Um, we are at home against Geisley and away against Self Shields. And of course, this is also our first two games in the Vanarama National League North. Um, we have made it into the North and not the South version of the National League, despite the fact that we were coming up from the Southern League. I I don't understand how it all works. Um, but most importantly, arriving at this level means we have... Uh, we are joining up with our big historical rival, Chester, who should be on here. Chester, historic rivalry. Why are they a historic rivalry, I hear you ask? You should go back and watch the FM19 version of the home series um, because Chester basically went on their own road to glory, blow for blow with us, and came up about four or five promotions with us, and we played them a lot. So it's going to be good to get an opportunity to play against Chester again, but also um, reunions against some of my former YouTube teams, um, we've got Boston, who was my first ever non-League to Legend side. Um, we've got Kettering, who, of course, were this year's non-League to Legend side. Kingslin were last year's. There's lots of Lelujo derbies in here this year, and I am excited. And hopefully, our new team will also provide some excitement. As you can see, we signed a lot of players yesterday. Don't be fooled by this. The vast majority of them have just gone into the under-23s, the under-18s, to incubate. And we'll uh, we'll drag them into the first team as and when it seems that they might be ready for it. The big news um, was the sales of Kieran Hodgkinson um, and I was on the wrong season there. And Tom Bachelor Ekpatetta, who is now a championship player, um, having already played for Blackpool in the championship this year. But we are, uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still not over those two being sold out from under me. But this is the team that we're putting out there for our first ever game in the National League North. And um, we're going with right in goal. It's a familiar looking team, actually. There's not many of these boys from the new side. And this is what I mean. I think this is this is how new seasons and how transfer windows are going to work for us. And um, the team isn't going to vary hugely from year to year, apart from the players who are, who leave. So obviously we lost Hodgkinson. We lost Bachelor Ekpateta. Um, but other than that and an injury to Beerith, which is why Roberts is starting, this is all players from last year because all of the new signings go in at the bottom of the conveyor belt. And then I guess... We, we're then waiting for the next few to leave off the top, um, which looking at who's wanted could be Cissé, could be Slam Dunk, um, could be Mir, could be Wright, who are the next ones to walk out the door and then be replaced with the next person to come through. And the trick to this save, the success of this save, is going to is going to rely very much on how well we keep the, the reserves, the youth team stocked up so that we've always got someone to step up, ready to take on a spot in the first team when somebody leaves. We didn't quite have that right this summer because we didn't really have a replacement for Bachelorette Pateta at left back, which is why Jeremy Rodriguez is going to be making his debut today, despite he's only being only a 20, two and a half star player who's only just signed for us. He's been thrown in at the deep end, much the, in the same way as Bachelorette Pateta was before. He was thrown in as a one and a half, two star, 16 year old we pulled up out of the youth team. So left back does seem to be a little bit of a problem position for us. So we need to prioritise it. Not that I have any impact on what we find. I just assign every player who looks like they've got any kind of potential and we worry about fitting them into the team later. Um, so we're going with right in goal, a back forward, Rodriguez, Davies, uh, Mir and Cissé, Slam Dunk, Davy, Hamilton and Whitaker in midfield. Hamilton um, is another new boy who's come in this year uh, from Manchester City via Lommel in Belgium. Um, and he looks like he's a little bit special, although he long term is probably going to be your replacement for Slam Dunk as and when he moves on, although as discussed in the transfer special yesterday, um, Slam Dunk probably won't be leaving until January now because the season's starting a little bit later than it normally would. So the the transfer windows for all the leagues he could go to and all the clubs that are interested in him, they're all closed at the moment. <laughs> and then we've got Pritchard and new boy Tyler Roberts up front. Ty up front. Tyler Roberts has come in from Wolves and he's getting the nod ahead of Henry Barton, who star rating wise 
is uh, is a little bit off the pace now, despite the fact he's been a star for us the last two years. So he, I mean, we'll let him we'll let him have a little look at the pitch every now and again. At uh, 25 years old, I suspect he's someone who's not going to make the step up. So let's let's try the new boy in the absence of uh, in the absence of Beerith because it's an opportunity for youth. We've always got to prioritise giving opportunities for the youth. Henry Barton is not going to be playing for us in League Two. Tyler Roberts could be if he's good. So we've got to be we've got to be thinking in terms of what's best for the ongoing development of the club, of the team, and Henry Barton is too much of a short term solution and he might not even be a solution. Pritchard's played it through to Roberts here and a first touch for Roberts, at least in a highlight, forces a corner and um it's gonna be an in swinger, I would suspect. That's what we're usually aiming for. It's gonna be Davy to take in swinger, looking for Pritchard at the near post. Can't find him. And now Geisley have got the chance for a counter-attack and we are scrambling back. And Cissé has been a little bit cynical there and this could be a red card. Um, it's not, thankfully, because he wasn't completely through, but it was a very cynical challenge from Cissé who didn't even get booked for it. I mean, it was it was very much a I'd better foul this guy because he's going to be through on goal situation. It's worth at least a yellow card. Sure. Oh, he has got a yellow card. It just wasn't showing up on the other bit before. So Cissé on the right-hand side, cross comes over and it's headed clear, but only as far as Whitaker, who of course very nearly left in the summer. But thanks to some shenanigans, we have managed to keep him. But I think similar to Slam Dunk, he would be interested in leaving if the opportunity came up. Whitaker plays it across to Slam Dunk. The two one-to-way boys uh, combining um, and it falls to Hamilton, who shoots from range and it goes over. We do need to keep an eye on both Slam Dunk and Whitaker. Um, certainly Slam Dunk has been a hero over the last couple of years, but un unhappy players are problematic in FM21. They have been in FM for several years. We've seen before how important it is to maintain morale, happiness, team cohesion, all that kind of stuff. And having players that don't want to be here, especially when they're team leaders like Slam Dunk is, can cause problems. Whitaker playing it across to Slam Dunk again. Those two combining very well today. Slam Dunk uh, playing it across goal. I'm not really sure what he's trying to do there. It looked like a cross, but it was far too far in advance of any of the players to be one. And normally he would have a shot from that kind of range. Um, you know what? We're all, we're all right so far. It's our first game out here at Steel Park in Corby while we try and search for a place for our new ground to be. And at this level, I know the media have got unrealistic expectations of us and think we're going to storm the league and go up with a 20-point lead at the top of the table again. I suspect it's not going to be the case this year. Um, like we were talking about in the transfer special yesterday, I think there's a little bit of a glitch when it comes to club reputation, where the youth setup is pushing reputation forward too quickly. And even, even regardless of club reputation, we don't have a squad of players typical for a team with the reputation that we've got because we can't go out and bring in players that are, are of Conference North quality. We have to develop them ourselves, having brought them in as youngsters. So we haven't massively upgraded the team from last year. So... I don't expect us to steamroll the league the way we have the last couple of years, but a win on the first day of the season would be nice. Um, Cissé with the throw, finds Whitaker, who flicks it on. Uh, Pritchard acrobatically playing it back to Roberts, who finds Slam Dunk. That goal, I mean, I want that as a gif. That absolutely would be a gif all over Twitter if this happened in real life. Whitaker with a flick on Pritchard. I mean, this is the Conference North, boys and girls. Danny Pritchard... Wonderful work from him. A six foot five target man with a touch like that. Beautiful stuff. Um, and Slam Dunk reaps the rewards. And we're going to take off Hamilton and bring on another new boy in the shape of Mauro Bandera, who came in from Arsenal this summer and is considered one of our better players. He was very close to getting the nod to start this game. So he can come on. Um, Teddy Davey um, is the other one who's not having the best of games um, in midfield, but he's... His fitness is fine and we don't really have anyone who can drop back and play in central midfield. So for now, he can stay on. What I will do is take off Slam Dunk. We're going to bring on Marcus Eiffel, um, who is another one who came in this summer, 18 years old, came in from Brighton um, and he is a natural left winger. So we'll give him an opportunity to head out there onto the left wing and show us what he can do. Um, because like I say, we're preparing for life without Slam Dunk and Eiffel might well end up being a part of that. Um, or it might be the other guy, Nick Nicholson. Is that, is that the name of the guy? It is Nicholson. Hamilton. I don't know where I got Nicholson from. Um, I've got to learn the names of all the new players. I am a monster. 
Right, Pritchard nods it down to Davies. Still dominant in the air at this level, which is excellent to see. I feel lovely pass into the path of Roberts. And Roberts has the opportunity and really doesn't capitalise on it. And Roberts apparently has had a good game. What we've seen of him in highlights is that he's missed a couple of good chances. I mean, he was, I think he probably got the assist for the goal. Um, but other than that, what's he done for me lately? Uh, one more new signing to come on now. Shay Charles is going to come on at right back. He's coming, another one who's coming from Manchester City this summer. Supposedly a centre-back who can play right back. My my plan for him is to probably use him as a right back. I don't see him getting into the team at centre back um, unless he's in there covering. Um, but uh, that's probably where I got Nicholson from. I read it on the screen. Um, but certainly at right back, he looks like he can definitely do a job for us. Right, collects the loose ball. Eight minutes left on the clock, and we just need to we just need to see this game out now. Pritchard with another useful flick on, but Roberts doesn't quite have the understanding with him yet that Beerith and Barton have both had previously, and here's Rodriguez on the left, lumping the ball forward. It's the right idea, lump it forward looking for Pritchard. Unfortunately, it didn't get anywhere near him, but Davey is there to crunch in a tackle in midfield, um, but uh, Geisley end up with the ball anyway, and Shea Charles is now lumping it forward. This is an unusual highlight. Eiffel hits it over the top. Roberts is through. The game is glitching like nobody's business, um, but Tyler Roberts comes away with the goal. I don't know why we're getting all the... Uh, the laggy frame rate jumping around issues on the game. I don't know if I need to do a graphics card update before the uh, before the second match or if there's a game update I've not done. But it was very stuttery in there. And as those of you who, uh, who knows around in my vlog and my Twitch stuff will know, the only thing running on my quite decent gaming PC is Football Manager. All the video rendering and recording stuff is happening on the streaming PC. So it sh Football Manager shouldn't be stressing out a decent gaming PC. So there's something afoot there. Perhaps I need to turn it off and on again. And Whitaker on the right-hand side. No no glitching or, or lagging this time. And Beisley have got themselves a player sent off. And it's going to end up being a nice, comfortable 2-0 win on the first day of the new season against 10 men. I've got, a, I've got a loose hair. My eyebrows are a mess. I've got media interviews to do after this to, uh, to talk about being the new boys in the National League North. I assume the media are going to be wanting to talk to me. If we both got a goalkeeper called Wright, that's lovely. I like a little bit of symmetry like that. And we're getting some very odd highlights in this match. I'm not really sure why we're seeing some of the stuff that we're seeing. Uh, Bandera now turns, runs. there's absolutely no one putting any pressure on Bandera. I don't really know what, what, what system guys are trying to play, but it's not proving to be very effective. The game glitching again there. Right, I am going to worry not. If it's frustrating you as much as it is me having these odd frame rate issues, I'm going to restart that PC before the second match of the episode. You're not going to have to put up with it all day. Um, I don't know what's going on. Restart, check drivers, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be okay. If it wasn't the first game of the season, I'd probably just start the episode again from the next match, but we can't really miss out on the first day of the season. I don't think it's been unwatchable. It's just strangely glitchy, which is not like Football Manager. Usually, usually it runs buttery smooth. But it is showing us weird highlights as well. What's going on? This is so weird. Davis now with the free kick. It's glitch, 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 glitch again. Well, that was a strange experience. Let's... Uh, Let's get this computer restarted and try and fix that little problem. Well, computer restarted, Windows update applied, graphics card update applied. I'm kind of understanding why it was a little bit laggy, um, but we should be fine now. Um, we do have some news as well. Um, in this game, Harrison Davis is going to become our all-time record appearance holder, breaking the record currently held by Bachelor Ekpiteta, um, and hopefully goes on to set an enormous record. He's here under a five, he's got five more years on his contract. We've seen that means nothing and he can be sold out from under me. But fingers crossed, he won't be. Um, so this is the this is the team for the South Shields game. Just a couple of changes um, from the team in the last game. Beareth is now fit-ish, so comes back into the team. And he, can, he can only play 45 minutes, um, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely be giving him his 45 minutes because he's Beareth and he's a hero. And we're also going to bring Bandera into the midfield with Davey 
dropping down to the bench. Look at me fixing my own bench so it doesn't have two centre backs on it. Oh, I'm 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 blossoming, blossoming into a real boy. It's beautiful. It's happening right in front of your eyes as well. So let's uh let's hopefully continue our good start to the season. Pick up where you ah pick up where you left off last time out. Learn to click the buttons, Kev. If it's glitchy and laggy again this time round. I don't know what to tell you. I've done everything you can do to fix a glitchy and laggy video game. Um, so hopefully, uh, if it if that doesn't fix it, we'll have to assume the game itself is broken. And that will be a worry because we're only two and a half, well, we're not even two and a half seasons in. This is the start of the third season. We don't want it to start giving up on us just yet. And we want to be we want to get at least 20 years in before it starts falling apart at the seams because the save file gets too big. I am removing the leagues that we're no longer playing in. So we're currently only loaded down to tier seven. We had it initially loaded all the way up down to tier nine, but I've reduced the leagues we've got, removed the leagues we've got promoted out of to reduce the file size. And I will start to add in some of the other uh, nearby nations as well, just to keep things competitive as we get further into the game and into European football and all that kind of stuff. When I removed tiers eight and nine, I've added in the other home nations and all their lower leagues so at least we're going to have a competitive United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Is that what it's called? Like people always tell I'm ignorant. I'm an ignorant man. And people always tell me I've got it wrong when I say stuff like that. Um, I've added Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and Ireland. And I know they're not part of the United Kingdom. I get that. I understand that much. Davis has celebrated being our all-time record appearance holder by grabbing his first goal of the season. And it's uh, it's much like every other goal he's ever scored for us. It's an in-swinging corner from Dunk. We have Pritchard and Davis both lurking at that near post. And one of them is usually there to head the ball home. Puns. Head the ball home. And we are joint top of the league with Darlington as it stands. But Danny Pritchard's gone off injured, which is worrying. Um, not least because I was supposed to take Biriff off at halftime. But now he's going to have to play the rest of the game. Um, in fact, no, he's not. We're going to bring Whitaker on. And hold on. No, not like that. We're not. Right. Hold on. We're going to bring Whitaker on for Beerith. No, we're going to bring Eiffel on. For, I know what I'm trying to do. Um, neither of these want to be target men, though. Can either of them play as a deep lying? What's his name? He can be a deep lying forward. And um, with Roberts as our attacking forward. And we'll do that. And I hopefully I've not broken Beerith by playing him when I shouldn't have done. Why has that changed? Because I'm still paused. There you go. The change has now gone through. So Whitaker getting a rare run out up front for us. What a time to be alive for Terrell Whitaker. This is his reward for not leaving us when he had the opportunity to. Um we and Whitaker's tired as well. Do we do we take him off? He's the most tired man on the pitch. Actually, he's not. Davis is. So and we'll take Davis off. We'll get Shay Charles an opportunity to play at centre-back, even though I said he wasn't going to play there. There he is, playing there already. Welcome to Kevland. Um, dunk at the far post, but the header goes just over. It was These games are certainly a lot closer this year than they were last year. I think we are going to be in for a, a more challenging season, um, but Tyler Roberts is already looking like a good signing. That's his second goal in two games, and he didn't even start this one. Um, so Tyler Roberts... Already announcing himself as higher up the pecking order than Barton. That's why we give him the opportunity ahead of Henry Barton um, to give him the opportunity as an 18-year-old to come in and do this. And you never know, he might go on to become the next five-star superstar that we've got, which Barton was never, ever, ever, ever going to do. We'll keep Barton around for as long as he's in our top four or five strikers because it's handy to have some experience. And there's only Barton and Slam Dunk at the club who are in their 20s now, I think, because... Most of the older players have left and the young ones haven't yet aged to that point. So he's handy to have around just like Slam Dunk is. But I'm not going to I'm not going to force him into the team and get in the way of someone like Roberts, who is already rewarding me for the faith I've shown in him by dropping him after his debut goal. We won't get into that. Mir plays the ball forward, looking for Roberts, who flicks it out to Eiffel, who does well to bring it down, burst past his man and has a shoot. A shoot? He has a shoot! From range, it goes wide. Considering he's a left winger uh, playing out of position on the right, that wasn't a bad effort from him, um, but it wasn't ever likely to test the goalkeeper, I don't think. Roberts flicks the ball on again, looking for Eiffel. Roberts seems pretty useful in the air, which 
I thought Roberts was really short. It might just be because I'm used to seeing him next to Danny Pritchard, who's six foot five, don't you know? So it's going to make Roberts look short. Um, but Roberts looking pretty decent in the air um, in these uh, in these closing moments of this game. Bandera is charging forward, leading this counter-attack here. And we have got men lined up in the middle to finish it off. And Roberts probably should have passed it on once or twice more because Whitaker and Slamdunk were both up there with him. Our entire front four just in a line waiting for the pass and Roberts not quite able to beat the goalkeeper with it. Slamdunk comes away with the ball from the resultant corner and ends up winning another corner. And this is likely to be the last kick of the game, I think, because we're into the final couple of seconds. It's Slamdunk with a corner. One more time, looking for that near post and it's Shea Charles, who of course is just on for um, Davis, which is why he's the one lurking at that near post now. Um, but that is another good result. I just want to have a look to see how tall Tyler Roberts is because he did look good in the air. Have we got another big boy? You know how I like a big boy. Um, right, Roberts is he's saying, uh, five foot ten. Loads of you are going to say five foot ten is tall, Kev. I'm six foot two. Five foot ten is not tall. Um, certainly not like winning the ball in the air all the time tall, but we'll take it. First Cloud Arena. What a name. You get some names for grounds at this level. But there we have it. A successful start to the season. Two 2-0 two wins. Look at the contrast in attendances. We're not ready for this level of football yet. Um, but we will uh, we will persevere and we will be back tomorrow with we're not going to show St. Oldman's in the Cup again. We already did that. We did that last year. And the early stages of the of the Fat Cup are a little dull anyway. Um let's uh we might go as far as Boston the reunion tour we could do Boston Kettering Kings Lynn as the next few episodes and see how see how the old boys are getting on you know full well I'm doing exactly that now if you've enjoyed that please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching